Hello fellow collector enthusiasts, this is E, no algorithmic name. Today I'll be talking about the District 9 Assault Rifle 1 to 1 scale by Wita. Wita NZ, if you do not know about them, is a very good company. They are primarily based in New Zealand, but they do have offices in UK and in America as far as I'm aware. Uh, what they do is they design movie props for all kinds of movies, including Lord of the Rings and of course District 9. Uh, they were the original designers and manufacturers of the weapons in District 9, which makes them a prime candidate to be distributors of movie prop replicas. Today we'll be talking about the, as I've said, the assault rifle, or the AMR B5, as described on the, sci on the uh, scientist's place cards in the movie. Uh, let's comment first on the box. The box is very large, so be prepared for storage problems if you do want to resell this. If you don't, hmm, up to you. Um, what I think is that uh, it's very large, five feet high, give or take. Good luck. Uh, in the box you'll see you'll have the rifle naturally, you'll have two wall mounting brackets and two screws to hold them in place. Uh, also you have two foam pieces which are inclusive with the more wall mounting brackets and I believe that is done so that your rifle does not experience shelf wear or in this case wall mounting bracket wear during its display life. Uh, let's get right to it. Uh, firstly, this doesn't come with a stand, which is very annoying because, I mean, it has a lot more presence, a lot more impact if it's lying on its side on a nice stand as seen with the 1 to 4 scale that they did manufacture. But it does balance quite well actually on its own. Right now it's balancing on the butt. Yes, the butt of the rifle. And from what I can see, it has no problem falling over at all. Okay, if I'm to talk about the size, I would guess it's about 4 feet long, give or take, maybe slightly less, I'm no expert on length. Uh, let's go on to the weight. I did say my previous video was around 7.5 kilos. My mistake, I'd actually weighted like this, which I don't think was very fair to the scale. So I went back with the bag scale, I weighed it in this kind of a format, and it actually weighed 6.5 kilos, which is still heavier than described on the site. Okay, now, discussing with the movie, Sorry, Wita. I did not see this goo in the movie at all when they were testing the rifle. I did not see this. It is, of course, unfair to base a single prop on a single weapon in the movie. I'm sure there's thousands of these, so Wita can be as creative as they like. But one thing that really does bug me is you can see the cylinder over here. It's very large. If you go back and look at the movie, there's a huge space or at least a larger space between the cylinder and the handle. And I think that was a very strange oversight of Wita, considering they had originally designed this in the first place. Although I can only imagine how difficult it is to produce something like this from a few sketches. Also, I'd like to talk about something called the pop factor. Now, in case you're wondering, that one is mine. I came up with it on my own. No copyright infringement intended, so sorry if it is. But what the pop factor is, is the power of presence. In a collection, not only is the color scheme appealing, not, as, not only is the size appealing, but just the shape, everything about it is truly unique. If you have this hanging above or middle or balancing on the side of your collection, it will stand out. And those of, well, people who do know District 9 would say, what is that? And those who don't would also definitely want to know. I've had a few visitors and yeah, I've just left this balancing on its butt. And they have asked exactly what it is, and I think I have created at least three more District 9 fans. <laughs> now, if I'm to also talk about the shipping. Shipping, I'm impressed with Wita because as a collector, I've had many different problems with shipping. Uh, the primary one being the shipping uh, tax, which is when you buy an item and it comes in, you have to insure it for a certain amount of money. And based on that insurance, your country will charge you a percentage tax. Given the, given the price of this, that was absolutely brutal. It's a horrible thing to do, but that's countries for you, living in the developed world. Okay, I'm going off topic. Uh, when it did arrive, I had just finished watching a, the Transformers 3 movie, which was <laughs> like a very nice movie. I enjoyed it. Sorry. And uh, what else? The, yeah, the shipping cost was absolutely nothing. Normally you don't have to pay if it's, 10, if it's insured for $10 or anything like that, you still have to pay. That's why when I came home and I found this box had arrived for me, I was just shocked. I said, no, it cannot be. I refuse to believe it because 
I would have had to have paid a heavy duty tax. No, nothing. I did not believe it until I opened the box, which yeah, was in my previous video, as you saw, I was absolutely caught by surprise. Now, because uh, I think I'm dragging it on a little bit too much, I'd like to comment on the nuts and bolts of this thing. It is a solid piece, no movable parts. I've mentioned that in my previous video. And I'd like to just compliment Mr. Greg Broadman. Sorry. Greg Broadmore. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Peace, peace. Mr. Greg Broadmore on his absolutely stunning work designing. And well, I guess the correct thing would be taking a sketch and bringing it to the material world. Uh, according to him, the science of this weapon is relatively simple. What happens is in each of these cylinders, you get a little gas. There's a small amount of gas. And as the projectile travels along the length of the barrel, the gas is slowly injected into it. Hence why they're not perfectly parallel, if you've noticed. They are unevenly placed on the side. A sort of goes in, goes in, and continues. And the projectile is pushed along by these gases. And I believe at some point it's ignited. I believe this ignites it. He didn't specify. And after that, yeah, it fires along and creates a lovely little blue explosion. You're going to have to watch the movie for that one. I'm afraid this one doesn't shoot. As Wita jokingly put, because you are not alien or do not have alien genetics like Wickers Vandermore, you will not be able to fire. Uh, what else could I talk about? I guess that's all really for this review. I find it very impressive. It is a large, wonderful piece. To get a better view of it, Scuff marks are very well done, and they are different to each weapon. Shows you that these were indeed crafted by hand, and a lot of effort was put into them. To look along the length of the barrel. Also, I'd like us to just pay attention to these stencils here. Indeed, these stencils here, and here. Now, if you pay attention to the other side of the gun... Sorry, it is a heavy piece you'll notice that they are not parallel. They are not the same stencil. They did use different stencils for these components. And I think that's very impressive that they were willing to go through that kind of effort. Uh, what else? You can look at the cooling circuitry here. A bit of alien gunk there. And I believe there's a switch. No, no, no. On the other side there's a switch. Again, it's quite heavy. Don't want to break it. And I think it's nice of them to include that. Again, the switch isn't movable, it's solid. But I find it quite funny that aliens would have a switch. Maybe it's an Earth modification. I'm not sure. Reverse engineered technology. The side piece, I am a little bit disappointed with the side piece. I mean, it was well done, but I mean, what do you look through on this side? Oh, well, I guess it's automatic targeting or laser targeting, or it is alien. Uh, no glass components, nothing. To comment on the rifle, the material, they say fiberglass, but it feels way heavier than fiberglass. If I could just give a little ring. But if you listen to the barrel, it's made of a different material. So yeah, I don't know what that is. Okay, so I will wrap up my video now because I think I might be going to a longer time than I anticipated. Uh, as you can see, I'm in my new house. Very quiet, very empty. I hope during the course of my living here I'll be able to buy a nice shelf and one by one I'll start placing collectibles over there. So until then, this will be E, no algorithmic name, saying enjoy your quest for bankruptcy. I am.